Hey everybody, how you doing? Tom Bellator here. Glad to see you're still here. You made it through the midterm, hopefully. You made it through three problem sets to date. Now we're working on problem set number four. This walkthrough is just basically some general observations to help you think about problem set number four. And then in following walkthroughs, I'll be looking at problems one through seven in detail. So let's get to the main thing here. Let's think about problem set number four. Some general observations. First of all, if you're a little bit behind, which I hope you're not, but week number four has some really good material on how to test code and how to debug code. Now, if you haven't watched those lectures yet, and if you're really pressed for time, that's okay, because you don't need to use try or accept or raise or these different assertions that might be quite useful if you do know how to use them. You can get by without those for right now. However, this problem set in general, I think, is designed to test your ability to handle very large code and to debug it. Because inevitably, you will have a lot of bugs, especially as you get near the end of this code, that if you kind of panic and you don't really think about how to handle it, you can make yourself a lot worse off. Plan maybe three to four hours, maybe five hours of work for this P set. It should be um, not too bad. However, the distribution of that time is not even over the seven problems. I think one through five are pretty easy problems that you can code very quickly in a few minutes, some of them perhaps. Problem six, and especially problem number seven, they get tricky. And this is where I think Professor Grimsom had really good advice about letting things just sit for a day or something, or give it a break, sleep, take a nap, whatever, and come back to it. Because problem number seven, especially, there are times where your code most likely will not work on the first attempt. And it takes a lot of thinking about how to get things to work properly. Most importantly, don't be overwhelmed by the length and the complexity of this code. My solution, I think, was a total of like 310, 315 lines. So my suggestion for this is, if you do feel overwhelmed when you first open up the, the Python code that you've been given, is to look at it in outline mode. And I showed you this before. I use the text editor Atom for this. But when you first open it up, yeah, wow, it's, how many lines is it? Scrolling to the bottom, 260 lines. That's a lot. What I do is I collapse all of these functions down into, well, just single lines. I use this the outline view just by clicking right here. And then I can see things well, a lot more holistically in the sense that it's not as overwhelming. And you realize there's very little you actually have to do in a sense. You just have to march through this piece set and just solve problems as you go along. So for example, you get some imports up here, you get some constant, uh, constants defined, excuse me. You have a dictionary that we'll be using. And then you just got some helper code. And then after that, the different functions that you'll have to implement yourself. Even one of those, this deal hand is already made, is already implemented for you. So once you see it that way, you've got seven different functions that you've got to write. It's not as overwhelming. And the great thing about this is that, and the modularity, the, the beauty of this modularity is that once you've got get word score working in problem number one, you don't have to look at get word score again. It's done. You've tested it. It's worked fine. So that's a really great thing, a great skill that you're going to be learning or improving, polishing in this problem set. One last thing here is obviously read each page of the spec carefully. That goes without saying. And then perhaps most importantly, I think, is always write pseudocode. I know sometimes, you know, sitting down with a pen and paper in this day and age or even just typing it out in just plain English or whatever language you like, it seems like a waste of time sometimes, but pseudocode is not a waste of time. Comments are not a waste of time. Okay, these are things that in the end, looking at the very big picture, will save you a lot of time. So do your pseudocoding. Okay, good luck in problem set four. See you later.